Today, I'm going to deploy WordPress website with Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is one of the AWS product that developer tools and use to deploy and scale web application. So you can go to their website to take a look what it is used for. After we log in the AWS account, go to Elastic Beanstalk. You can also search here Elastic Beanstalk, and then we will take you to that page. If you click on the little start beside the name of that product, it will show up on the top menu bar here. After we go to the Elastic Beanstalk page, create application. Find the name of the application you prefer. I'm here going to WordPress. You can add the application tab. The platform is PHP. We use the default for the branch and version. And here we are going to upload the application code. Click on the configure more options. So for different sections, software, instant capacity, you can change the configuration setting. And here I'm going just to use single instant, free tier eligible. So if you want to build a high availability using multiple instance, you can reference my video, build WordPress website using the AWS reference architecture. If you want to edit the instant session, you can just click the edit button and then make the change here. When we create the Elastic Beanstalk environment, we can include the database. If we add the username and password for the database, the Elastic Beanstalk environment will add the RDS instance automatically. But in my case, I want to keep the RDS instance separate and outside of the environment so that even though I remove the environment, I can still keep the RDS. So that's why I'm not going to include the database instance here. I just leave the default and create application. We are going to set up an RDS instance separate. DB instance, create a database. And I have a video deploy WordPress with Amazon RDS. So pretty much I will be following the similar procedure inside this video. RDS, MySQL. I'm going to use the free tier. I'm going to name it WordPress. To name it WordPress user. Okay, I need to write down. So username WordPress user. Password I'm going to say WordPress password. Password, WordPress, password. T3 Michael, free T eligible. And he allocate storage 20. I want to put some restriction limitation on the storage size. 
disable the auto scaling storage. I'm going to use the default setting for the VPC and sublet. Public access, put it yes. And for detailed setup of a VPC sublet and security group, you can refer to my uh, video, build WordPress website. And here I only use the default VPC sublet group and security group, but later on I will make the modification. Additional configuration These are here. WordPress DB. So DB. WordPress DB. You need to mark down username and password and the database name. I'm not going to use the automatic backup because I'm only testing. So I disable all those. Okay. Create database. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look. So the environment set up already. This is the sample page with the PHP sample code. We are going to upload the WordPress code. So we are going to wordpress.org, get WordPress, download WordPress. So that's the WordPress zip file. It's check all and zip it. Let's go. Let's see how is the RDS instance set up. It's still creating. Default security group. Edit the inbound room. We are going to make modification to the security group. First, we my this one, my secret Aurora anywhere. And also, if we want to make connection to the database, we need to set up the SSH protocol. So that's it. But of course, in theory, you should put some limitation, such as choose the EC2 security group for this rule, and also choose your own IP address or any designated IP address for this SSH rule. But anyway, here I'm going to just choose anywhere for convenience. Let's take a look at the creation state of the RDS and then we are going to copy the endpoint of the RDS instance. Okay, here's the endpoint and we are going to copy go back to your downloaded WordPress folder mm. Find the uh, W pre config sample. This one. Okay, here. So remember the WordPress user, WordPress password, and WordPress DB. WordPress DB and username will be WordPress user. Password should be WordPress password. Yeah. So here the DB host, local host, will be the RDS endpoint, the one we just copy from the RDS instant page. 
So control S. We're going to save it. Go back to the zip file folder here where you download your file. Make a copy of the config sample file. Change the name to be WP config. That's it. So inside this WordPress folder, Control A, select all of them, and then compress to zip file. Compress the zip file. We are going to upload this zip file. Okay. Is that WP config? So it doesn't matter what's the name of this zip file. It doesn't matter as long as you are inside this WordPress folder and zip all the file inside the WordPress folder. So we are going to upload this WP config zip file. Go back to the Elastic Install environment, upload and deploy here the zip file. You just zip, open, and then deploy. It might take a little while to upload and deploy the application code. When the Elastic Bean Store environment is creating, we can take a look how to make connection to the database RDS instance. So copy this endpoint. Mm. Go to the MySQL word branch. We can add the connection, such as here. I'm going to name it WordPress. Host name will be the endpoint, RDS endpoint, and then the username. We remember that we use a WordPress user, and password is a WordPress password. P A S S W O R D. Okay. So we test the connection, and then we, this message telling you successfully make the MySQL connection. Okay. So we go inside. The WordPress DB is the database name we added when we created the RDS instance. So all the table WordPress is going to create will be inside this database. Now the table is empty because we have not set up WordPress website yet. Okay, let's go to. Go back to the environment. Let's see, it's still running. Okay, now it's ready. So we click on the environment URL link. Continue with password. Not in. Appearance, uh, remove uh, okay. With the site, it does not use HTTPS, so this will be fixed after we use our own custom domain name. Page cache is not detected, but the server spawn time is okay. Page cache. So when you click on the information, learn more, it will tell you. Okay, you recommend to install this. There's so many cache plugin. You can choose whatever you want. And here I'm going to just oh use elastic. In here, I'm going to use the recommended W3 total cache. 
So activate setting the nest test page cache. So recommend it. Uh, test database cache. We're making cache. Hmm, not much difference. Test object cache. And here I'm only following the setup visa. And of course, they have so many options and so many items for you to make the configuration on. So you can just uh, you use the setup visa to modify the configuration. You can go inside. They have so many options for you to make change. Okay, here. Let's see. The only one left is uh, your website does not use HTTPS. So that will be fixed after we use our custom domain name. Let's go back. I have a domain name register with rule 53 and also set up the hosty zone as well so click on the host zone i'm going to use this domain name create a record a record alias elastic bin stock region north central canada wordpress Create record. 